<laughs> there she is right there. I didn't even look at it. I was looking in the back. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. <laughs> you like that? You like that interior, buddy? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you guys need to be caught up and you haven't watched some of the previous videos, let me catch you up here. We have traveled up to New Jersey, Pennsylvania area for uh, the previous video, which was Atlantic City Truck Meet. That is done, that is over. Uh, you guys know that we are good friends with the guys at South Bend Clutch. We hang out with them at events. Um, and we had previously bought a truck that you guys had no clue about. I've been waiting to come up here to Atlantic City Truck Meet to get it because the truck is originally from New York. Another really, really cool, I'm excited to show you guys, uh, really, really cool. It is a 2015, it's a 2500 four-door long bed. Of course, has to be a G56 truck, but we have been waiting to come kind of pick up this truck uh, and it does need to be fixed, go figure, right? I'm sucker for, for a project, not really a project, but uh, it does need a clutch. That's why we're kind of we're kind of hanging with Delton from South South Bend Clutch, awesome, awesome friend of mine since the very, very beginning of time. But we're hanging out today because the truck actually needs some attention in the clutch department. I'm like, you know what? What better time to come up here, get the truck, see the truck for the, I've never actually seen the truck in person. Uh, get the truck, fix it with Delton, and also kind of see what's happening with the old clutch. Uh, it's not a old unit by any chance. It is a different brand than South Bend. Uh, and again, no intentional uh, bashing of any sort here. We really just want to take the old clutch out, kind of see what failed, and maybe potentially educate you guys, show you guys maybe some differences, some of the what's going in this truck, why we go with South Bend for pretty much everything uh, and what better time to do it when we're literally in Delton's backyard up here grabbing the truck. So that's kind of where this video is kind of starting from. We're number one up in the area and we're number two picking up the truck. Number three, we were with the guys from South Bend all weekend long at Atlantic City Truck Meet. And it just so happens that this truck needs a clutch and just so happens that we're in Dirty Diesel's backyard and they were awesome enough to let us come borrow their lift, bug them a little bit and kind of hang out and do that. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a trifecta of a friendship here, getting this truck fixed so we can take it back home uh, to Kentucky. But if you guys need parts, you guys need wheels and tires, you guys need anything, you guys know the guys over at Dirty Diesel's got you covered. They are in the Reading, Pennsylvania area. You guys know we still use them all the time for wheels, for tires, uh, for suspension. If you guys need any of that stuff, if you guys need your own South Bend clutch installed, these guys are a dealer. They can get you taken care of. Greatly, greatly appreciate Delton from South Bend and Dirty Diesels making this video happen while we are kind of just on the road. So, take a look at this truck. I am, I am already in love with this truck. The truck came up for sale uh, on one of the groups. I have seen this truck before on Instagram and I have fallen in love with all of the rare oddities that some of these one year, two year, three year colors come about. You guys know I'm always looking for something different, for something cool. And this truck certainly checks off all of those boxes. So it's a very unique color, a color that you do not see all the time. It changes shades. It is just a really, really cool truck. Four door, long bed, monotone very rare color uh, the previous owner will put up his instagram he was really really amazing to deal with uh, the truck does have quite a bit of work done to it already it is a very low mileage truck for the year uh, actually i think now that it is unlocked we'll be able to see that uh, knockout cam has paint matched some stuff on this truck previously 52 is where it is on the clock right now it's got this really really cool two-tone interior which again i'm not i'm not exactly uh, you know guys know me I'm, I'm kind of a little bit more plain a little bit more all black everything but i'm stepping out of my comfort zone each and every truck but the two-tone interior definitely matches this truck extremely well again bought the truck sight unseen so we're kind of every time i walk around it we're familiarizing ourselves with it just a little bit more but i believe back in the day uh not recently but cam paint match the mirrors the bumpers the valance on it 
so it's already it's already got some really really nice touches that we would have been doing anyway we were gonna we're gonna continue to build on that but man i'm excited but that's enough talking for the intro we need to get the truck in the shop and start working on it and see what actually happened inside of the transmission and see uh, what happened with the clutch that is in it currently how's that for an intro fire dialed 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 Dawson thinks he's going to be driving that truck all the way home. Do you see this right here? You see this? Yeah. Your keys? Thanks for the new truck, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to go in here, see what they got going on. And we'll get this sucker pulled in. There he is. What's up, dude? What's up, how are you? I'm great. How are you? What's up? What's up, baby? Whoa. That's new. The old Swift cut. <laughs> Josh, you're wearing a hat. Yeah, I know why. I don't know why. It's on ball. Ball, baby. <laughs> I got the Delton haircut. <laughs> Dude, that ball. So, it up, is. It, it's, the, it's the going ball, that 30 look. So I just went. Yeah, I owned it. I might, I might need a knife. Oh, no. Del Del Delton's got it. Delton's. I'm going to use Delton's. I'm going to use Delton's. What is this? What is this? You turned to scrub now? Yep. You've been replaced, buddy. See, is this, a, is this, is this like a super nice one? Nobody else has these. Oh, nobody else has these? This is a Koyo bearing that we buy and we press onto the center section. Because the bearing's that much better? Because, yeah, it's a Koyo bearing. Okay. This is a much, much higher quality bearing. Okay. Much higher quality. Should we go pop the hood on that thing? Yeah. I want to see it. You, know, you want to see it? I need a full time. I mean, it is your truck, obviously. Yes, thank goodness. Oh, it's your truck? Uh, it is now. It is, it is not his truck. Let, let, let the record show. Not his truck. Uh, you, got you got the keys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, to my truck. <laughs> you know, she's she's got she got things and stuff going on in here. That doesn't sound great. Do that again. Oh my gosh! Just put it in gear and start going. That's probably why it's in four low to just keep it stopped. Otherwise, you probably can't stop it. Alrighty then. This feels dangerous. It is definitely dangerous. Worst case. Shut it off. Shut it off. Are you ready? You're gonna have to get out of the way. Yeah. I was going to take these down. Oh, shit. Dawson, what'd you do? I didn't do anything. I got my shoulder taken oh, out there, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm just going to use this. I'm waiting for Delton to hold it so it doesn't take you out. Oh my gosh. That almost gets you. Almost. Did you film that? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it scrub, <laughs> scrubbed my arm. So far we've used 115 for this whole entire thing. I told you he's gonna be on his tippy toes. <laughs> I, forget, I don't even know what it said, but I can't wait for him to start yelling at you.
Is it no spinny? Look at the size difference. Oh, the guy she told you not to worry about. That's you. I think I got everything. Got it? That says really light. There's your problem. Oh, bow, baby. Somebody marked them but did not torque them. The, there's the head of the bolt right there. That's why the flywheel is so loud. If you could feel the bearings inside of this, the pilot bearing feels like complete shit. Or like, yeah, it's easier to see that way, but. Like how much do you th how much how much damage do you think was caused by just the loose bolts? Like the majority of it, or just like obviously the bearings are bearings are one thing, but I mean the loose bolts didn't help at all because basically it got jammed it got jammed in behind here, and so it wouldn't allow it to engage. So it held it it held it off of the flywheel surface. Which See that it's spun. Quick catch up before we kind of roll into the new clutch. A lot of the noise that we were hearing in the beginning of the video, and obviously I think we kind of heard it in a previous clip, is some broken bolts, some bolts that have backed out into our old clutch. That was a lot of the noise, that was a lot of the issue. Really main cause is these bolts that connect your flywheel to the back of your crank uh, need to be tight. They need to be very tight, they need to be torqued to spec, and they were not uh, done properly, which they happened to work them way out. We did have one that was broke off in here. We did spend quite a bit of time, but we did manage to get that remaining bolt out of the crank, no problem. Threads are still great. Uh, kind of got everything cleaned up. Uh, the truck did need a rear main seal, so we went ahead and put a rear main seal in, got all that, everything cleaned up. So we're ready to basically go back in and reassemble with the new clutch. What I wanna kind of focus on and give you guys all of the information is all of our new clutch that's set up over here on the table. So we're gonna kind of go underneath the truck or out of the truck right now and kind of talk with Delton about the new clutch, but truck wise, uh, repair wise, we're back to normal. Everything is good, and uh, that's the that was the main cause of, of all of our issue. But we've got some other stuff that we want to show you guys uh, with the new clutch. Again, we're going with a South Bend Super Street clutch. Delton, what did we find here? I know you guys heard a little bit of us talk about some bearing issues, but take it away. Bearing seemed a little bit loose on it, um, but all in all, the main failure was the the broken bolt sitting in here and got jammed in behind this uh, disc. So therefore it wasn't making contact to the flywheel and it just, it wasn't moving. Yep. So it was, it was preventing, preventing the friction material from making contact, therefore not allowing the truck to move. Yep. So this is the South Bank Clutch Super Street uh, twin disc. So Literally, this is the biggest streetable twin disc that we can build. What we do is go to a sprung hub assembly. That's the biggest thing when you're driving a vehicle on the street every day, you have a certain amount of oscillation in the motor. So there's a certain amount of kickback continually as, a, as it's firing. So having a, a properly oscillating hub dampens all the harmonics going through the transmission. So in a case with this old clutch, having a solid disc, it's not dampening any of those harmonics, which translates uh, vibrations and noise back into the transmission. It's noise, but also wear on an input <clears throat> shaft, correct? Correct, so with, with this being a solid hub, your, your hub material is a harder material than your input shaft, and this sits at the same spot on the input shaft all the time. So it's sitting in there, and what'll happen is it'll wear a groove on your input shaft where, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 miles down the road, you go to pull your transmission out, it won't come out because this will be locked into oh, a groove right. okay. on the input shaft. Okay. So in this specific case, they have a solid uh, solid hub disc, 
but uh, the like, encapsulated one, one, disc one is. is is already sprung. Obviously, this is encapsulated, meaning it's riveted together, so we can't take it apart and look at the other side. But um, our springs are a much much bigger spring um, and much much heavier assembly. What a lot of people don't realize is your your poundage per square inch of clamp load increases when you have less material. So for instance, we've got 12 button, 12 ceramic buttons on here versus six on here. So the poundage per square inch is greater on this assembly. So what happens when in, in a clutch assembly, you take the coefficient of the friction um, with a mathematical calculation of the clamp load, and therefore that is the holding capacity of the, of the clutch. Mm -hmm. So when you have less surface area, and the clamp load remains the same, it's more poundage per square inch on that surface area. So what happens though, what a lot of people don't realize is you have half of the wear material. Yeah. So this is going to wear out quicker because you simply don't have as much material. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too is all of our, uh, all of our twin disc stuff with the exception of the Duramaxes are a 13 inch disc. Um, yeah, the and so yeah. when you when you set this on top of each other versus a 12 inch disc it, it doesn't sound like a big thing but when you grow the outside diameter mm -hmm. you you increase the the capability the holding capability because you're moving your your torque out further versus it's the, the okay. same theory of spinning a small tire a 30 inch tire versus right. a right. 37 inch tire yeah um, and that's just holding power yeah exactly okay so the yep. biggest difference between the street dual disc and the super street is on our street dual disc we run two different types of friction material so on on the street dual disc we run an organic material on the flywheel and the pressure plate side ceramic material on the floater plate side super street ceramic material both sides both discs yep because um, we're worried about more power application so correct. i'm not sure if we said it in the beginning of this video or not the truck does have some other engine modifications done to it previously. The truck does make, uh, should be somewhere in that seven, 800 horsepower range. So we're out of the normal dual disc land that we would recommend for pretty much stock truck, lightly modified, anything like that. Anything above what kind of power? So the street dual disc is rated at 650. Okay. Um, we have a full organic option and then the- uh, Dual friction. Yes. Uh, so 550 on the full organic or 650 on the on the dual friction. so if you're above that range and you're looking for something that uh again is going to be still street friendly but hold the power that's what we're kind of explaining with this one not to confuse anybody who's looking for something a little a little lower on the street dual disc we actually substitute some six of the springs for a neoprene slug to kind of help quiet them down a little bit the other thing on the street dual disc is we run a uh, floater plate that is has little snubbers to dampen yeah, it yep. and a pin in here again on the on the super street we want to remove all the neoprene out of there we want to make this as as big and bad as physically possible mm -hmm. as a streetable clutch and because it is also SFI certified SFI approved yep so you can do some competition stuff yep. with it um, another little thing that that we do is your your hub on your flywheel disc versus your pressure plate disc mm -hmm. actually recess into each other so they kind of like lock together yeah self-center themselves and then so it's running the billet floater plate but it's also running the billet steel flywheel and it has the bronze inlay so the nice thing about the super street is the fact that you run this thing for 20 30 40 however long mm -hmm. and you've you've gotten rowdy on the street with it and it's tired it's worn out you can send this entire assembly back to us and we can rebuild it okay so okay. Gotcha. you know it's it's a fraction of the price of buying a new one sure and that's why we use the bronze inlay so that we can salvage the flywheel but it also dissipates the heat much better the other cool thing that when we tore this one apart um is throw out bearing so a lot of people don't over the years throw out bearings have always been an issue and you know, we have dealers that for years will get our bearings, throw them in the trash can and buy an OEM bearing. Right, 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 um, right, right. Over the years, we've always tried to address the bearing issue and better it. So this is actually a Koyo bearing. 
that we're actually we're actually buying the bearing and the collar separately assembling it ourselves and i mean you sp yep. spin it it's yeah Much. night and day different oh yeah versus versus this one yeah this one but so that's i mean i thought you actually threw that <laughs> really i was waiting for a bang <laughs> <laughs> were you like anticipating the bang dude i, I mean yeah, i can because it left oh, okay all right. I think we're pretty much ready to start putting it back together. Um, that's that's kind of what we found. That's kind of some of the downfalls of uh, some of this style of clutch that we've seen. Um, again, just trying to keep you guys informed on really why we stick with South Bend, why we put this stuff in there, whether it's the street dual disc or the lower stuff. You know, we've kind of gone through a couple street dual discs. Uh, we love them. They perform great. That's if it's any, if any of you guys have sent me a DM looking for a clutch or what I recommend, like it's either the super street or the normal uh, street dual disc. So we're going to get to assembling some of the parts now that we've kind of got the truck side all squared away and we should be back up and running here shortly, but we'll, uh, we'll jump right into installing this bad boy. Ready to go. Wow, brother, yank her out. I don't think I showed the people this. I saved, saved the threads. I, I think so, we're gonna, gonna triple check just to make sure. Why do you remove the washer? Why? Yeah. Because Southman tells you to. See, washer. Because the sticker says so. Because the sticker says that that washer belongs on the ground. You don't question the engineers, you just do what they say, okay? Is there a reason why you actually take it out to space spacing or throw or so that there's enough clearance so that the clutch port can go back far enough? Okay. Oh thanks guys, that's you know, that's what I actually wanted to hear. We I don't care what you want to hear. Because this is, you know, a helpful video. Like two goobers clowning trying to put a clutch. The first in. Greg A video ever on the YouTube channel yeah. said to remove the washer, okay? Really? So you can go back and watch that if you want information. We're here to entertain and be funny, okay? <laughs> wow. There we go. She's the one now. That is slick, boy. No extra lube required. Don't put any lube on here. Really, no, no, you lube. definitely don't want to. Because it's going to sling all over the clutch. Because it slings all over the clutch. Yeah, there's some channels out there that show lubricating. Not mine. Not. not mine. No. Not mine, no. no. Do not. Do not. So there's nylon. Uh, there. The whole point is to have stainless braided from all the way from here to here. Correct. So South Bend hydraulics are different, so they go from here all the way Correct. to there. Oh, okay. Where you don't have um, expansion. Yeah. Gotcha. So your most positive displacement of, of fluid. What fluid. is what is that? Is that just the adapter? I think it's that's an isolator. Oh, you know what it is? It's garbage. Garbage. Something mm -hmm. that's not needed if you would just have stainless braided the whole entire way. Uh-huh. Gotcha. So do you leave the little dicky doos in there and have yes. it push out itself? Yes. I never used to do that. I always used to like put it. No. Don't do that? No. 
Why? Bolt her up and send it. <laughs> Did you hear that, folks? No. So we'll have to bolt it up and send it. Why is it not there? Check the brake. Is that loud? Wow, this thing is loud. Oh, why is it that loud? It's so loud. Uh -oh. <laughs> Dawson's in love. <laughs> Dawson's in love. Buddy. This thing is so loud. This thing's a ripper. It's that big old tip. Right to the moon? Yeah, probably not. Six-speed second-gen swap comes doesn't bring a smile to your face, then you're probably dead inside. Yeah, honestly. Five minutes later. As you guys can see, we have made it back down to Kentucky. We have made our 12 hour trip back home. No issues with the truck. As you saw in the last clip, we drove it around. We broke the clutch in. Uh, everything is good to go on the truck and we are ready to, I don't think we've said it in the beginning part, but I really want to daily drive this truck for quite a while. You guys know the long bed has a, has a soft spot in my heart and I just feel like this is, this is gonna be the new daily driver for a little bit. I, we did go ahead and every time every single time go ahead go ahead there we go went ahead and picked up a new bed molding because my eyes just happen to go to this spot every single time but Two thumbs up for our Super Street clutch. It is going to be able to handle all the power that this truck already apparently has. We will test that in the next upcoming video because we're gonna be putting the truck on the dyno and seeing what kind of power it lays down. But again, I can't say thank you enough to South Bend for continually supporting uh, all of our manual transmission nonsense that we get ourselves into. They are the only clutch that we use on the channel that I will recommend and that continues to support us and we are going to continue to support them and also huge thank you to uh, Josh and the Dirty Diesels crew for letting us uh, use a lift for two days while we fix the truck. I am extremely happy that the truck is fixed. Everything is good um, and I know we didn't get into a lot of details on the the truck and where it's at and all of the parts and pieces that are already on it. That we go over in the next upcoming video. So if you want to know like the full breakdown, the full rundown, 
find out how much power the truck does or doesn't make you guys will have to stay tuned for the next video coming out this sunday so stay tuned again also huge thank you to everyone that got entered in the first gen giveaway we are waiting uh currently to hear back from our third party sweepstakes company which shouldn't be too much longer we will have a winner for that you guys will see them pick this thing up but we are just waiting right now for the winner for that but again huge thank you to anyone who gets entered in the giveaways the best way to support the channel uh and support your boys appreciate you guys so immensely much but that is gonna wrap up this video two thumbs up we need a name we need a name i think michael's right in here hold on hey michael you think like long bed larry like what like we need a name Okay, no, no, okay, no, no, no on the Larry. Okay, we'll have to come up with a different name. So, uh, I'm not really sure. Besides the G56 long bed, I'm not sure exactly what to call this thing. I'm just going to call it the green truck because this color shifts and changes a lot, but it, it is primarily a really, really cool green. The color's called Prairie Pearl, which I don't know why. I just now, it's not really a fan of the whole prairie the prairie thing. But anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video very, very soon. See ya.